So I'm not a famous person. I hope everybody's really enjoying the conference though. This conference is like the best conference in the world. Um, I love coming back here and it's obviously just an honor um, to be here. So I hope you guys are excited. This is like a, a little bit of an unusual topic. We haven't really talked about this too much so far this, this go around, but my topic is resuscitative hysterotomy. Um, this is a new name for a really old procedure. And this is the artist formerly known as, this is the procedure formerly known as the perimortem C-section. But what's the reason for the name change? Maybe it's like, sounds cool, sounds trendy. Um, not really. That's not the real reason, although it does kind of sound pretty cool. So the procedure itself dates back a couple of millennia, back to the time of Julius Caesar, right? He put the C in C-section. And during his reign, Roman law dictated that every dying pregnant patient have this procedure done as a last ditch effort to save the baby. Now fast forward a couple of thousand years to the 1980s where case reports start cropping up where maybe inadvertently both patients survived. Well over a couple of decades the literature builds and builds and builds. And now we have enough to sort of look at and sort of analyze, well, what's going on? This certainly doesn't seem like it's a fluke anymore. And there's one sort of overwhelming conclusion that we came to, which is that the delivery of the baby in a timely manner simultaneously with the maternal resuscitation was sort of the key factor that enabled the survival of both patients. Um, and in fact, that should be the goal. And so forward to 2015, our obstetrical colleagues put together this call to action paper and they published this. And in that paper, they suggested this name change, that we change perimortem C-section to resuscitative hysterotomy to reflect that new change in priority because the simultaneous delivery of the baby with the resuscitation of mom was the key factor that can significantly increase the likelihood of both patients surviving. And obviously, conversely, any delay is going to highly increase the mortality rate of both patients, right? So we used to think, actually, and, and then in the same year, the American Heart Association guidelines also changed the terminology in their maternal arrest algorithm to reflect the new name, right? Resuscitative hysterotomy. So it's trendy and cool, and it makes sense. So, and for good reason, right? The survivability data looking at everything so far is over 50% in mom and more than 70%, almost 80% in baby. And which is shocking, right? Because a lot of the babies are premature. So that is, that's sort of like amazing numbers. I mean, for resuscitation data, right? And so we used to think that this is kind of a kitchen sink maneuver, right? This is like, uh, probably not going to work. I don't know. I'm just going to do it. You know, we're learning, right? Um, but that's not really what we should be thinking about this procedure as, right? We should really be thinking about it as a foundational part of the resuscitation of a particular subset of patients. So let's do a little mental exercise here. Let's think through a case, uh, which may or may not have been based on a real story. Okay, so you get this call. EMS dispatch calls ahead and they said, we're bringing you a 28-year-old female. Uh, she's about 30 weeks pregnant, status post MVC. She was initially complaining of abdominal pain and then she suddenly decompensated in route and now we just lost pulses. CPR is in progress. We'll be there in five. Patient is on their way. What's your first step? Probably this, okay, right? Naturally, we're going to be freaking out. Um, but we are all professionals, right? We're all professionals, so we're not going to be doing this on the outside. We're going to be doing a little freaking out internally. And the real first step is going to be to get the people. I heard some people talking back there. We're going to call obstetrics, right? We need to call some people, get all the people. Uh, but again, it's going to depend on your shop, what your resources are, who those people are. So what I want you to do is you want you to organize your thoughts and think about organizing into teams. And so we want three teams. We want an arrest team, we want a hysterotomy team, and we want a baby team. 
And so you're going to delegate those tasks and pick a team leader for each of those teams who are going to then put together the rest of the team and then assign roles and take charge of those things that are going to sometimes happen to ha- have to happen, right, at the same time in overlapping fashion. So you've assembled your team. The next step is going to be to get a bunch of stuff, right? Those team leaders are going to get the things that they need, the equipment, the supplies to do the tasks that make sense in their particular subgroup, right? And this basic stuff that you need is a bunch of PPE for the hysterotomy team. You need some basic surgical tools, a scalpel, some scissors, some sterile towels, and a stapler. And then Team Baby is going to need all the neonatal recess stuff. And very conveniently at my shop, we organize all this stuff and keep it right in the drawer under the warmer with a, like a med tray with the appropriate things, and then we can just roll it wherever it needs to go. So we got all the stuff that we need. Let's focus on team arrest. So the primary priority for team arrest is to deliver high-quality CPR. This is the most important thing that improves every patient-centered outcome, right? And in this particular subset of patients, there's an additional maneuver that has to happen, right? We have to displace the uterus. And there's a bunch of different ways that we can do that, right? Um, But I would argue that the way that you want to do it, pick a way that doesn't get in the way of the hysterotomy. You need to be thinking that we're going to be doing this procedure. And simultaneously, CPR has to be ongoing. And they need to keep that uterus displaced while they're doing the procedure. So pick a way that doesn't get in the way of the hysterotomy team. So back to our patient. She comes in. She's in distress. She's in PEA, right? Um, she has a non-shockable rhythm. Now it's time for hysterotomy team to go. How much time do they have? Well, it used to be thought that we had like two cycles of CPR. We have four minutes, five minutes. It was stressful. And I think a lot of people were just not doing it maybe for that reason, right? Like we, did, we just can't do it that fast. It, it takes that amount of time to just make the decision, right? And so, but the good news is that there have been uh, a lot of more studies out now and they say that there's you've got uh, the ideal the ideal time frame really is for under 10 minutes for mom and under 14 minutes for baby but good outcomes have been reported as far out as 25 minutes right so don't count anybody out and the real answer is as soon as possible so if you look at the guidelines the font is really small so i'm going to summarize for you you have an arrested patient who is pregnant and with viable dates over 20 weeks and a non-shockable rhythm, you need to cut now. So the decision-making should just be that, right? So let's talk through the procedure. Um, It seems a little bit like it's, it's overwhelming. It's a complicated procedure. And so whenever you have something like that, you need to just, you know, put it into a way that you can remember it and organize it in a way that's not difficult. So for my residents, I made this little mnemonic. And that is cut down, cut up, deliver what's inside, and close. So when you cut down, first thing you want to do is you want to palpate the top of the uterine fundus or the xiphoid process, whatever is easiest. And then you're going to make an incision there with your scalpel, and you're going to cut down, cut down all the way down through all the abdominal wall layers to the pubic symphysis, right? Now you're going to expose the uterus. Cut down. Second step, cut up right? Now you've got the uterus exposed. I can't believe I found this picture. Anyway, um, then you take a a little piece of the bottom, the inferior margin of the uterus, and you're going to make a small incision with your scalpel, big enough to stick your finger through there, and a pair of surgical scissors. And then you're going to switch to the scissors, and then you use the scissors to cut up over your finger, right? The reason we do that is because we don't want to cut the baby. Um, look at this happy baby, not a cut on him, right? And so that leads you, right? Now you've opened up the uterus, leads you to the next step. Obviously, we are going to deliver the baby. Um, you're going to clamp, cut the cord, and you're going to hand off to your team baby who are ready to start neonatal recess. Obviously, the people you want to put on this team are maybe neonatologists, peds people. And if you don't have those people, just like in any ER, you're going to sub in with your ER folks. Um, nurses who have background in that situation um, are going to take over the neonatal recess. You're stuck with the placenta. 
Um, this is the most appetizing version of placenta I could find for this talk. Um, so we do what we've learned how to do. You pull a little bit of gentle traction, scoop it out. Um, the placenta is gone. And now you're at step four, which is pack and close. And so this doesn't have to be pretty. But again, this is really the moment where your uh, surgical colleagues, your obstetrical colleagues are really um, going to be there for you if you have them, because this is something that they can do efficiently and effectively. Um, but from our standpoint, we just need to pack and close for hemostasis because when pulses come back, this is going to be when it happens, right? And then you can just staple, not use this stapler, maybe, um, but a surgical stapler, and you can just staple closed. All right, so quick review of what we talked about. You hear that somebody's coming in with a maternal arrest. We are not going to freak out externally. We are going to get the people, and we're going to get the people organized into three teams. You have your arrest team, your hysterotomy team, your baby team. And then you're going to decide to do this procedure if the person meets criteria and their non-shockable rhythm. You are going to just do these four steps, cut down, cut up, deliver what's inside, and close, and possibly save two lives. My name is Shyla, and uh, I'm very, very, very much looking forward to connecting with you guys here at this conference or, you know, in the ether somewhere. Um, feel free to just reach out anytime and have a great rest of the afternoon. Thank you.